Okay, so let's just get this straight. We cannot solve Philip and Harley's problems, can we, Frank? <laughs> Obviously not. Thank, Thank you, you, May. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. All right. So, let's work on some problems. Frankie, let's work on some problems closer to home, okay? You and me. I thought we broke up. We did break up, Frank. We broke up so I could date May. No, so I could date May. What? You know, these Fred and Ginger Ales can certainly sneak up on you. Right? Sure can. Her bartending skills are one of the many reasons I fell in love with her. Okay, Rick, let's get serious. Crunch time. I'm way ahead of you, Frank. Go ahead. The reason let you're go. way ahead of me is because I let you get ahead of me. No more Mr. Nice Guy. May happens to be one of the sweetest, sexiest, blondest, most available women in town, and I'm not going to be a gentleman anymore. Me neither, Frank, because I think I'm falling in love. Oh, boy, God, I can definitely get serious about that, huh? No, Frank, it's guaranteed something's going to happen. The one thing that can happen and will happen is one of our hearts can be broken, Frank. Maybe both of ours. I know things didn't work out with you and Abby, and things certainly didn't work out with Elaine and I, but they sure didn't. Hold on here. Remind me once again why we're looking at another woman twice. Because not only is she incredibly beautiful, Frank, but she's a very sweet woman. Right. Mm. Poor, poor me. What is the matter with you? There's nothing wrong with us. Frank, it's all ahead of her, man. The, the inevitable disillusionment, the, the heartache, messing up people's drinks, all of it. You're feeling so sad. Why don't you leave her with me? Remind me to have you stuffed. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you what kind of a stand-up guy I am. Let it go? Okay, I'm going to give you a piece of critical advice here on how to improve your love life. Thank you. Don't take any advice from Philip. That would be like uh, taking lessons on cavalry charges from General Custer. Custer lost that battle, didn't he? Yes, he sure yeah. did. You know what, Frank? See, Philip has tried very hard to make up for his mistakes, and, and his circumstances haven't helped him. Maybe. But it'd been a whole lot better if Beth was out of town. As no a matter of fact, she is. She's in San Cristobal. Tony is in his office. Are you sure this is a good idea? When Pilar and I asked him about you, he was an explosion. Very intense. When a man is fuerte about his feelings for a woman, he usually means the opposite. Tony is ready to forgive you. If he doesn't, I'll just die. The role of Cassie Winslow is being played today by Laura Stepp. Maybe sadness makes beauty more precious, but San Cristobal has never seemed lovelier. I know what you mean. Mr. Surgeon? There's a message from Mr. Spaulding for Mrs. LeMay. Don't interrupt them, I'll take it. That for me? No. Cassie, are you all right? I'm just a bit distracted today. It's hormones, probably. Oh, yes, I remember that roller coaster feeling. Well, um, maybe we should go for a walk. I know that that always helped me when I was pregnant. That's a lovely idea. I'll join you, if I may. Of course. Edmund, join us. Oh, thank you, shortly. Well, if the, if the girls need me. I'll let them know who you are. Beth the call right away, eh? Sorry, Spaulding. She's busy. Zach is up there, just smiling in his sleep. <laughs> At least somebody in this house is happy. Until they grow up. Maybe he will make better choices. Unlike us? No. Not unlike you. You were the right choice. You were always the right choice. All I have to do is look at him to know that. We made something wonderful with him. And I still feel like we have something wonderful that's worth fighting for. Fighting? Fighting is the operative word, Philip. Is that what Zach deserves? I'm not ready to give up. 
You sound so much like your father when you say that. That man made your childhood a misery. Is that what you want for your son? No, of course not. But we can do better. How? When we don't miss an opportunity to pound each other into I don't care. Dust. I won't. I won't let us quit. Well, it takes two, Philip. I know that. And the two of us stood there and pledged to do this, for better or worse. Now, we've seen a lot of worse. You know, logic seems to say that at some point, it has to start to get better. Philip. What is the alternative? You tell me. Is this just another disappointment for you? Is this... Is this just another failed marriage for both of us? Because I can't live with that. Maybe we are both just too stubborn to see what is glaringly obvious to everybody else. That this marriage effectively ended when that plane crashed in San Cristobal. I don't believe that. Did. I don't. I know you don't believe it. That's what convinced me to stick it out. Because you honestly believed that we could make this work. And I honestly wanted to and believe I, it. I still do. And that has to count for something. We're not horrible people. But this is a horrible situation, and I don't see any other way out of this. I know that you don't, and, and, and the reason that you don't is because you're just seeing the way it is right now. What you're not thinking about is that things do change, and people change. You know, right now, you can't stand the sight of Beth. I can't even stand the thought of and, Beth. I understand that. I understand that. But that, that could change. You know, you, you talked about my father making my childhood a misery, and he did. He absolutely did. When I found out that he lied and he was not my father, I hated him. You still hate him. No, I don't. Still I, hate no, him. no, I still hate a part of him. It's not the same thing anymore. It isn't. I, I learned to understand him. It's not... It's not about the same thing. I work with him. He's got an office down the hall from me right now. When I, when I want to kill him, it's usually about something that he's done now, in the present. Great. No, I'm, you know what I'm saying. I'm saying that, that it's not about the lie anymore. We got past that. That isn't, that isn't between us every second of every day. And it hasn't been for a long time. And I'm not Alan. Which is probably good, because I don't know if the world could put up with another one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nobody else in the world would say something like that, honey. Not when we're having this kind of a fight. We still smile at the same stupid things. Let's just not throw all this away. Let's not do that. Let's give it one more try. And we'll, we'll push everything else aside. We won't let anything get in our way. All I'm asking you for, don't say no. Just, just give it a little more time. Please. You know, marriage, marriage is a lot like running a marathon. You do hit the wall. And then you have to push. And you have to get your second wind if you're going to finish. That was sneaky. What? Your little marathon metaphor, not quitting. You know I hate quitters. Oh, I'm saying is that... I, I don't I, have to say it again. I got it. <laughs> I know you're not a quitter. Just because you know me so well. And you know me. You know I love you. Sweetie. It's not the worst thing in the world to end something. When you realize that it's hopeless, that's not quitting. That's being smart. We're not there yet. What do you want us to do? Keep at this until it gets as bad as it can get? What good is that? Don't we deserve to be happy? Oh, 
Who's happy? <laughs> Nobody's happy. Do, do you know anybody, married or single, who is unequivocally happy? <laughs> nice attitude. Well, no, I'm serious. Do you? With the exception, maybe, of, of little children who are just too young and innocent to know any better, or, 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 or some stupid, sappy character in a romance novel. Nobody's happy. Nobody's happy. Maybe that's our problem. We're looking for that kind of a happy ending, and it's not going to be that way. Maybe what we need to do is just agree that we want to, we'll be together for a while, and, and it's okay if we're miserable. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that sounds like fun. We could. You could sign me up for a lobotomy while you're at it. We could do it. Rick would do it for us. He'll give us a two-for-one marital discount. Rick would discount. do it in a second. He is so sick and tired of hearing us complain. Fr Frank could take up a collection at the police station to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody makes me smile the way you make me smile. Nobody ever has. I love you. Don't quit. <laughs> Can't get a break. Can't get a break. Hello? Philip? Edmund? I got your message. What's so urgent? Uh, let me talk to Beth. Your message was marked urgent, so I read it. Is it urgent or not? Edmund, I have neither the time nor the inclination to discuss it with you. Just get Beth. Are you sure that Tony didn't mean it when he said he never wanted to see me again? We have a saying in my country. Deja que la cose hoy, porque mañana lo cocina. It means, let the rooster enjoy himself, because tomorrow he's cooked. I don't think you understand, Catalina. Tony didn't enjoy himself. I, I didn't mean it so I exact. Uh, it is when a man, especially a Latino, needs to express himself. He needs to let it all out of his system. And then what? I mean, I would walk on broken glass to get Tony to forgive me. You, you hurt his pride. You have to give him a chance to win it back. You have to let the rooster strut around the barnyard. It seems like there's a lot of roosters strutting around in my life, all angry at me. Like some. Did, did he say anything about me to you? No, but I see how it is. Yeah. Well, Tony's mad at me about something that I did to him, and Sam is mad at me about something that I did to his sister. I mean, why is it that some men are so protective of women who are perfectly capable of protecting themselves? <laughs> Muy macho. Uh, yeah. Muy macho. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yep, life is just preordained, Frankie. Heartache follows love the way winter follows summer, the way death follows life. Let me get you an antacid. Mm. No more bunny benders, Frankie. I'm cutting myself off here. Uh, Fred and ginger ales. Whatever. If I leave you alone with May, you got to promise me not to make too much progress. Mm. No, I promise, all right. To give her my best shot. Good. That makes me feel better because the harder you try, the more I know you're going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. But cheers. <laughs> Say goodnight, Rick. Oh. Good night, Rick. Tony. I'm wearing the Christmas present you gave me. Oh, yeah? Why don't you keep it as a souvenir? Bye. Dear St. Anthony, please come around. I've lost something that can't be found. Tony's feelings for me. Where'd you learn that? You're not, you're not Catholic. Catalina said that Saint Anthony was the patron saint of lost things. And I've lost a lot of things lately. I guess your gift was appropriate. Yeah? Yeah. I lost my dad. I lost the sense of family I thought we had. I probably lost a couple of friends because I was such a jerk. I guess I've lost myself. I don't have a lot of self-respect right now. And the thing that hurts the most right now is that I lost you. 
I got work to do. Kelly, nothing. I mean, I'm going to make this very, very simple for you. You needed my legal permission to take my kids down there, and I can rescind it at any time. And deprive those poor children of a few weeks in the sun? I can give them a vacation anywhere in the world. They're happy here. Edmund, I am not going to argue with you about this. I have a right to communicate with my family. Oh, so they're your family now. Listen, Edmund. I, I, I am going to call back in an hour. Beth had better be there. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> Don't tell me no! Beth needs peace and quiet right now. She needs to forget about Springfield for a little while. She doesn't need to sit by the phone and wait to report to you. Edmund, I am warning you. I... He is denying me access to my kids. You know what, I... He may think I'm kidding, but I will fly down there and I will bring them back myself if I have to. Hey, go. Go. Go to Beth's kids. Go to Beth. Go to San Cristobal. That's where you want to be, not here with me. Not with Zach, certainly. You're free. There's nothing keeping you here anymore. Go. No, this, th none of this is what I want. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. You just can't admit it because you don't want to be the person that you are. You haven't wanted to be that person for a very long time, what, Philip. What, what, what the hell does that mean? What it means is that Beth is a thousand miles away. And she may as well be sitting on that couch over there. This, this is not about Beth. See, you say that with so much conviction that not only do you almost convince me, you actually convince yourself. No, it's the truth. Philip, I'm sitting here and, I, and, I'm, and I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, okay, he, he's on my side. Sounds like he's putting me first. I, I think I can deal with this. I actually think I can deal with this. But then something else happens. The plane crashes or Lizzie gets terribly sick or... Or the baby's born, or Jim dies, and you and Beth start your weird little dance mm. all over again. Okay. And I start becoming this person that I hate, this nasty, weak, needy person. And I can't live like this. I can't live okay. like this right. anymore. Okay. This is not life. Look, this is a slow, painful death. Fine. It doesn't have to be this way. But this right? is the way it is. No, no, no. It, it doesn't have to be. I'll, I'll get Rick. I'll get Rick to call down and check on the kids, or I'll go through Lillian. I, I don't have to talk to Beth. Philip, it's not negotiable. It's over. We are over. Go to St. Cristobal. That's what I want. No, this is not, this is not what I want. Go file your flight plan. You can take off immediately. Make sure that you admit to yourself that that woman will be tied to you for the no, rest of your no, life. No, 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 I won't. I know. That's why I'm doing it for you. Go ahead. Go. Make sure your kids are okay. Go make sure Beth's okay before she turns to Edmund. Just go. Just go do something. God, before we kill each other. So what you're telling me is that I, I have to choose between you or Lizzie and James. That's No, don't duck it. That's what, what? you're telling me. Because what you're saying is that you get to end it like this. And you don't. You don't, you don't get to decide that our marriage is over. Go to San Cristobal. Okay. Okay, fine. I will. 
I still, I... I have some say about this. Not anymore. We'll see. didn't join us. Uh, I'm sorry, I've been on the phone. Ah, well, we have a crisis. What is it? The children found a family of toads living under the tiles in the courtyard. And I told them I had no jurisdiction over the toad kingdom. No, no, no not a kingdom, a democracy, according to Lizzie. And the children think that someone of importance should call on the toad president, and they have chosen you, Edmund. Well, I'm honored, I think. Oh, uh, by the way, Philip called. Nothing urgent. He just wanted to make sure everyone was all right and seemed concerned about your security. Well, I hope you told him that we don't make a habit of endangering our guests. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Philip tends to be a little overprotective sometimes, but I will be sure to let him know that you're taking very good care of us. Uh, did he want me to call him back? Oh, no. It's no hurry. Why don't we see to the toads? Oh, on the way back, we can collect Susan from the stable. She's bonding with a particularly fine mare. I arranged her to ride. Oh, and I promised to take her down to the beach to see if we see the stars. Stargazing. Oh, I love stargazing. Oh, maybe we should all go. <sighs> this little one just decided to try kickboxing. I think I'll sit here and try to catch my breath. Uh, perhaps another time. Uh, Edmund will take good care of you. I promise. What was that about? Nothing. I uh, yeah, just wouldn't want Philip to be proven right, that's all. Do you need to lie down, or...? No. It was just an excuse to have some time alone with you. Darling. I seem to present you with nothing but problems. Insurmountable, impossible problems. Nothing is impossible where there's enough love. You taught me that. Have you really forgiven me? I think I forgave you the moment you said you were sorry. I just had to work my way back through it. My God, Cassie. If you would have left me. That was never an option. Even when I was stuck in my hurt and anger, I loved you. I just never knew if we would get back to where we were or how long it would take. I couldn't comfort you. You comfort me. You were suffering too. You have the most generous heart in the world. All this, Cassie, I don't, I, I don't want this to hurt you. I realize the truth is important to you. And what is important to you is important to me. But all I want, Richard, is to be your wife to fully share the life of our child, to know that you really trust me again. I will never, ever leave you. could be real danger here. Now, if this is true, if this is yet again another plot to undermine the monarchy, you and this baby pose a real threat, and you are at risk. Now, I've found some place where I want you to go. It's close to Springfield, and you'll be close to Dr. Sedwick in case you need help with the baby. What are you talking about? Cassie, please. You have to do this for me. Why can't I stay at the farm? That would be the first place that would, they would look. They? I have no idea what we're up against, and I... I won't even be able to come and see you, because I don't want to lead them to you. Now you're scaring me.
Yes, it is. Our flying time to St. Crystal. Okay. It's such a lonely sound. The wind or the ocean? The ocean didn't sound so lonely when we could see it. When the sunset made it all purple and red and orange. And now it's like a big black living thing. Homer was right. Homer? I believe she's reading the Odyssey. No, Susan. To Homer, to the ancients, fire was more powerful than the sea. It was a divine element, stolen from the gods. Fire cleansed, fire purified and made perfect. And so for a hero, who was himself touched by the divine, he deserved a funeral pyre, a great stack of cedar logs, his body surrounded by everything that was important to him in life, all of his family present. The fire would be lit, and his body would be consumed by the flames and purified, restored to perfection. Stand there all night. Hmm? I remember when I first walked into Millennium and saw you. You were different from every other boy I'd ever known. Yeah, you don't have a lot of high school dropouts as friends, right? You're smarter than a lot of college graduates I know. Maybe not book smart, but life smart. A wise guy, huh? Sometimes. You're more. You understand people. You're always watching, figuring stuff out. You see what really matters. Most people s see me and, and, and I'm just a pretty blonde with an okay mind. Nice girl. But from the beginning, you saw something more. And you liked me. But maybe I didn't dare think that you really cared. Maybe I thought I was just another conquest, another notch on your belt. Maybe that's why I thought that it was okay to use you to stop my dad from marrying Olivia. Because I didn't think that you really cared or it would really matter to you. But the moment that we, we got to that awful Rex motel and you were so sweet and you said all the right things and you were trying to make everything special, I realized that I had made a terrible mistake and that you really did want me. I didn't lock myself in the bathroom because I was scared of you. I locked myself in the bathroom because I was scared of myself, of wanting something that I wasn't ready for. Hey, look. Look, don't, don't apologize for, uh, for holding out. I mean, it's, it's a girl thing, you know? Just like, uh... It's like guys gotta ask the girls, girls say no, right? It must be some rule in some book. That doesn't mean the guy has to like it. Y yeah, I wanted you. 
All right. And do you believe me now that I wanted you to? Anything need to be starched before I go? Harley, what is it? Me alone, Rick. Where's Philip? Where? St. Cristobal. I'm so sorry. Don't, don't ever, don't ever play me like that again, okay? No, never. What am I gonna do with you? Huh? I'm sorry for screaming at you. It's okay. Right? No, no, it's not. It's not. What am I gonna do with you, huh? Mm -hmm. I, I can't stay mad at you. Can't make love to you. What's, what's a guy like me supposed to do with a girl like you? You could kiss me again. <laughs> so that's it. And it's over. And I did it. But really the big question for me is... Why did I invest so much of my heart in something that my gut told me was over when that plane crashed? Why? Because you and Philip love each other, that's why. Because you guys had a son together. Okay, that's Zach why. is a reason. Mm -hmm. Zach is definitely a reason. But the other reason is because Philip needed so desperately to believe that he was not a liar and a cheat that he convinced me. And you went along for the whole thing. Frank knew. My father knew. They tried to tell me I was nuts. You weren't nuts, Harley. You were trying to save a marriage. Trying to save my marriage. Right. Yes, until... Until it got so I didn't even recognize myself anymore. I have to find Harley again. I have to find myself again, Rick before I shrivel up and die. And, um, well, I know it sounds awful, but, well, that's the plan. Richard, we just found our way back to each other. I can't leave you. I can't leave San Cristobal. Cassie, you are my life. You, Tammy, and RJ, and this baby. This baby who may or may not be the next heir to the throne. Now, if anything should happen to me... Oh, don't say that. Don't even think it. You're carrying our child now. You have a part of me inside you. And I want you to know this. You have my heart with you. Always. I guess no one would think of looking for me in a convent. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take very good care of you, I, I promise. I, I've been told that they're, they're beekeepers. These mm -hmm. nuns, they actually, they keep bees and they mill their own flour and they, they, they grow their own fresh produce. Oh, sounds incredibly healthy. <laughs> but you really can't visit or even phone? <sighs> I'm sorry, I wish there was another way. We'll be all right. You do what you have to do, and then we can all be together. My princess, I love you with all my heart and soul. Um, 
Mom, I can find my way. I know my way. I want to be my, by myself tonight. I understand. Good night, Susan. Good night. Susan, these things rest on the knees of the gods. You gave me Homer's The Odyssey for a reason, didn't you? Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I think she would have found Homer sooner or later. No, no, I meant um, for this, for, for everything, for peace and time to mourn. And what you said about fire, Susan will be comforted by that for the rest of her life. And so will I. I'm glad. Will you, will you um, put your arm around me?